I'm Jerry Herb. And I'm Chris Martin. We're getting down to the brass tacks and hard facts of how to capture friction loss in plumbing and hose. Here we're flowing 160 gallons a minute from a 7 8 smooth bore and our 200 foot of inch and three quarter. Now we're gonna look at the pump panel and start getting some of the numbers. The first number we wanna look at is our big gauge, what we call the engine pressure. The next one will be the discharge pressure or the little gauge. Best practice is to always pump to the little gauge. There could be a time though where mistakenly somebody might look at the big gauge. The big question is, is there any difference in between the two? In this case, yes, there's a five PSI difference between our big gauge and our little gauge. So depending on which one I look at, I can already have a five PSI difference in my attack package. The next gauge we're gonna look at is the one we put here at the chick sand swivel, right in the cross leg. We supported it with some webbing so we can see the gauge easier and helps with a little bit of kink. This gauge is reading 120 PSI. So we take 130 minus 120 and we now have a 10 PSI friction loss in our plumbing. A couple different things can impact you on the plumbing side of the system. First off is did you put a spec in for how you wanted the rig plumb? In many cases, people don't take advantage of that. So you might have hard pipe weld, you might have flexible pipe that's put together with Victaulic fittings. They're going to have different performance with respect to friction loss. Another thing that's very significant is a lot of rigs have a front bumper pull. If you have a 200 foot jump line at the front of the rig and pump it the same as a 200 foot pre-connect directly over the pump casing, there could be significant pipe loss in its travel to the front of the bumper. It has to travel over the axle. There's many different elbows that could be involved. It can be significant, 20, 25 PSI loss. We're gonna be documenting all of these numbers as we go, and we'll be breaking those down for you. We like to use these large post-it notes on the side of the rig or a big whiteboard. That way everybody on the drill ground is involved and it becomes an inclusive drill and not just a couple running around with a clipboard. So as we transition now out to the delivery end of our system, we're capturing our flow with the flow meter and we hit the next gauge. This is at 100 foot. So the difference between this gauge and the chick sand swivel gauge gives us friction loss in the first 100 feet of our system. The difference between the 100 foot gauge and the gauge at the base of the nozzle gives us friction loss in the second 100 feet of our system. It also gives us base nozzle pressure. Here we're utilizing a smooth bore. We pitoed to ensure we were at 50 PSI. If we were using a combination nozzle, we would need that gauge to confirm we were at 50 PSI based nozzle pressure. Next, we'll get into how do you actually measure nozzle pressure. 